Hello and welcome to the Reapers. So we're back in the Hornet and I've been recently learning about the different types of countermeasures and how to use them so I thought I'd better pass it on. So we're going to be looking at today the ECM system, the electronic countermeasures and the chaff and flare basically, uh, the ways and the ways of dumping them, uh, the automatic ways and the manual way. So first thing is if we look at the ECM, uh, we can get rid of this, they're both uh, master switches are behind the joystick here and you can actually get rid of it by clicking down at the bottom like that. Uh, which is bloody useful so first uh, we've got the ECM um, now that is essentially an electronic jammer um, so the way it's going to work is that if there was a hostile plane out there and he was going to fire his radar at me uh, some of the radiation from that radar would bounce off my plane and go back to his receiver and that's how he would see me so um, an ECM system uh, receives that um, initially transmitted radiation and it understands what's going to reflect back to the hostile plane and it then concocts its own radiation return that's similar but um, basically invalid it has uh, invalid information in it which is going to confuse the hostile radar so the hostile is going to receive back their original radar return along with a bunch of junk um, return uh, that's been carefully tuned to fool the hostile radar. So that means that the hostile won't know the range that we are at. He still, still can get our azimuth, so he knows which direction we are, but he can't get the range information. And if he hasn't got the range information, he can't fight properly because he can't fire missiles at us. He can't do stuff like that. Um, now, note that it only works um, outside of a certain range. So outside of about, I mean, it varies different planes, different radars. Outside about 20 miles, we'll be able to fool him. Uh, with the ECM. When, once we get within 20 miles or so, he gets something called burn through, where he can burn through our jammer, and our jammer no longer um, deceives his radar, so he can fire on us and get range information. Uh, so with the Hornet, it's a built-in ECM system. Some planes have to have them on external pods, like the Vigan or the Flanker series. There are positives and negatives for using the ECM. So we've spoken about the positives. We can, outside a certain range, we can fool the hostiles radar. And with even, even within the 20 mile burn through range, we can still have an effect on the hostiles radar and his radar guided missiles or Fox 3s. Um, but there is also a negative. Now I'm not sure how relevant this is to the Hornet system because I don't know it well enough, but this is ECMs on ge in general. Um, they make you like a massive illuminated beacon firing out radiation. And so if there's a hostile hunting you, um, he'll be able to see you and, and you're transmitting ECM. He'll be able to see you outside of his normal radar range. Uh, so say his normal radio ra radar range is about 50 miles or so. Uh, if you had your ECM on, then you could be seen at 100 miles or 150 miles, at least the azimuth. Uh, which you are and so it makes it easier for him to hunt you uh, now again I'm not sure how accurate it is with the Hornet because I don't understand, understand the system well enough but in the other planes the, the flankers and the eagles that's certainly true so generally the way I use the systems is that I keep them on uh, a passive mode until um, we get within normal range detection of about 50 or 60 miles and then I turn it on and um, and then I leave it on and again if I'm running away um, I don't really want to be broadcasting my ECM, so I usually turn ECM off if I'm running away and trying to hide. Uh, let's have a look at how to use it. So um, the, uh, it's behind the stick, like we said. This is the master mode. We can have it off completely. We can have it on standby. Uh, that just essentially warms the system up. It's not actually really doing any any work. I believe there's a standby button that goes off. Uh, uh, sorry, warning that goes off here. It takes three or four minutes to warm up from a cold storm. There's a bit test here again. There's a, um, um, a relevant light there for when the bit test is done and when you when you get the go to head to use it. There's receive mode. So this is when it, it is working, but it's only receiving and considering information. It's not actually transmitting the false information out to the hostiles. And there is uh, XMIT, so there's transmit, so this is when it's fully active, it's receiving information, it's processing the information, and it's sending the false jamming signals out to the hostile radars. At this point, we can also point out the, uh, the threat warning lights up here. Um, I don't have any radar threats at the moment, so nothing's displayed, but if there were hostile radars lighting us up, then it would tell us the different types of radars that are, that are illuminating us. You can have AI, that's a hostile aircraft. You can have SAM, that's obviously a ground-based SAM launcher. You can have AAA, that's radar-based AAA, and there's others, I don't know the full suite, but they'll illuminate when um, those radars are active. 
Okay, so that's the ECM. Now let's go on to the countermeasures. So at the moment we've got chaff and flare and different ways of deploying them. So chaff is if we want to fool a hostile radar. It's a series of metal strips that helps fool the hostile radar. Uh, whether that radar is in a missile or whether it's an aircraft or whether it's a ground base and there's flares that's for ir missiles basically so if someone fires an ir missile at us we deploy our flares and that helps to fool the ir sensors as well as chaff and flares there are the upcoming gen x expendables so the chaff and the flare essentially are built into the plane and get deployed i'm not sure exactly where they are on the structure they're here somewhere you also get the gen x expendables which we don't have access to yet but they will be i believe separate pods that can be carried and um, go further than just chaff and flare uh, and used for falling host used for falling hostile radars and missiles so we'll cover that when that comes out now let's just look at the chaff and flares so the first thing we want to note is that we've got the ecm jettison here um, so if we're in a world of pain and we're coming in for a crash landing or something the last thing we want is a bunch of flammable flares so we press the jettison button there and as far as i'm aware it just jettisons all of the flares maybe the chaff as well i'm not actually sure then we've got the master mode for the um, chaff and flare dispensers so we've got uh, a mode at the bottom called off which is just means you won't be able to use them at all got on where it goes into a, a kind of automatic mode where we can control them in various programs through um through one of the DD, uh, ddi screens which we'll do in a bit the one i use is bypass because it's just what i'm used to from the fc3 planes where i uh, learned dcs bypass just means that you can literally press a button and a flare will come out or press another button and a, si a simple um, chaff will come out so it's bypassing the automated system basically and we better show the controls for that so we've got dispense switch aft um, which naturally sends out one flare or dispense switch forward which sends out a chaff so let's have a quick go with that for the dispensers to work in any mode we're going to need master ma master arm on so send that on and we'll go to outside view one flare and one chaff okay so that was using it in manual mode now let's turn it off and back on again uh, so basically to the middle selection uh, so we're going to use it in the uh, kind of automatic mode if you like when you go to the electronic warfare page you can see this is it the al-47 so first of all it's running its test you can see under here it's got its pit uh, it's got its uh, built-in test it's giving us, it's giving us a go ahead and we're waiting for it to choose standby when it shows standby it's good to go okay so that is good to go now now there are different modes we can use it in there is manual mode that is where we can choose a certain program of chaff and flares to be expelled and we need to actually press the button um, on, our, on our joystick to fire that program off then there is so that's manual there and it's currently got program one selected we'll have a look at the programs in a minute then we've got um, semi-automatic so basically at this point the uh, the system itself will choose its own program based on the current threat that's being fired at it so if a radar um, if a radar missile is being fired at us then it would choose um, a, a program of chaff relevant to that threat or if an IR missile was being fired at us or some sort of IR threat and it just and it would decide it would need flares then it would choose that but still because it's only semi-auto you'd still need to press the actual button yourself to use it and auto fully automatic mode this is where it chooses its own program and fires them when it decides the time is right so if uh, this big bird here this s300 was firing a missile at us uh, then it would fire its own selection of countermeasures and it would trigger them itself okay so let's go look at the manual mode shall we so let's back to manual Okay, and um, to get some more information, we're going to click on the ALE 47. That's what the system is called, by the way. Okay, pause there. So here it tells us our remaining. We've got chaff 58 remaining, flares 28 remaining, and these can be changed when you're on the ground. When you're loading up, you can choose how many chaff and flare you get. Over here, I think these are the Gen X expendables, the um, uh, the pods that we we're talking about earlier. Uh, they're not available yet, so we won't go over that. First of all, we can step through the different manual modes. So we've got step down here, and you can see we've got manual mode two selected, three, four, five, and one. And the different buttons that we use to trigger that. Right, so dispense switch aft will basically fire the program that's selected. So if, if a program one is selected up here, it will fire program one. Program three is selected up here, it will fire program three. But the uh, dispense switch forward will always fire the manual five program. I don't really know why this is. I think that's because maybe if you've got an emergency 
uh, program set up as program five, then you can always get to it, while the other switch, the aft, will get to the selected program. Let's now look at how to change the different manual programs. So once we've got manual selected, we're going to go to arm there. Um, and here we've got, uh, you can see we've got program one selected and it's telling us that it's going to fire one chaff and one flare and it's going to repeat that fire ten times with between each repetition one second. So every second it's going to fire one chaff, one flare, ten times in total, okay? And we can step through the different, uh, the different programs, three, four, five. Um, and this includes the Gen X, um, which we don't have at the moment. So we're just going to look with Chaff and Flare. So let's change Program 1. So step back to Program 1. And I want to set it so that if I was Chaff only. So Chaff, I'm going to select there. We're going to put that up to 2. Flare, we don't want any flares at all. So we're going to put that down to 1. These two, we can't change at the moment anyway. Um, instead of a repetition of 10 times, so we're going to go to repetition here and do a repetition of 4 times and the interval between each repetition, instead of a second, will go down to 0.5 seconds, let's say. Let's go to save, make sure we pr press save, otherwise all that will be lost. Uh, now let's press the uh, countermeasures dispense off button and fire that off. And there they go, they fired the full repetitions, half a second in between each repetition, and it was firing chaff only. Um, and then if I wanted to go and set another program, let's say um, if I wanted program three, and I wanted to get a whole bunch of flares, four flares, why not, let's have one chaff. Repetition, I don't know, seven times. Actually, there's a bit too many. Three times with an interval of two seconds. Whoops. Let's save that. We've got manual three up here selected at the moment. Let's fire that. Every two seconds, we're firing off one, uh, one uh, chaff and four flares. And that's most of our flares gone there. And remember, if you press the dispense button um, forward, it will always fire program five. So even though I've got, let's try um, program one selected, and if I press forward, it doesn't fire program one, instead it fires program five. And again, you can go and set up program five to whatever you want. So essentially you've got access to two programs at any one point. And once we're done messing around in here, we can return back and go through changing our different modes. Uh, so. Um, uh, Semi-auto and auto, like we said, are based on the RWR system. Uh, so we'll go through that in more detail when it's more complete. It's not very complete at the moment and not complete enough. Um, the only other reminders are, uh, I'm in air to air mode. I didn't need to be in that. I I'm, I'm, think I clicked that by accident, but the master arm needs to be on. And that's it. Um, they're obviously quite hard to set those programs up on the fly. So most people seem to set them up on the ground before you take off. That seems wise. Otherwise, I can't think of anything to add to that. I hope that helps and I'll see you later.